Hello everyone, I'm Ella and welcome to my channel. So recently I unboxed the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro 360 and this is actually a two-in-one device, meaning that I can use it as a laptop just like this, but I can also flip it over 360 degrees and now I can use this as a tablet. So I've been using this device for a few weeks now and I think it's actually a fantastic device for digital note-taking. Now I've been digitally note-taking for the past three years using this device right here. And honestly, I think digital note-taking is the best because well, one, I no longer have to use paper. Um, I can also very easily add images to my notes, which I do quite often. I can also better organize and save my notes. Uh, I can share my notes with other people when I'm working with them. And of course, all of my notes are with me on just this one device. And before I continue with the video, I want to thank Wondershare Repair It for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. So as someone who loves taking pictures and who makes YouTube videos, having my photos and videos corrupted is one of my worst nightmares. I sincerely hope that you won't experience any corrupting, but if you do, you can try to save your videos and photos with the Repair It tool. It is a software that can help repair corrupted videos and photos no matter how they became corrupted it also supports many formats, including MOV and MP4 for video, and JPEG and JPG for photo. Now, there's also a tool called Repair It Online, which can repair videos directly in your web browser. It is free and super quick and easy to use, so if you have a corrupted video and you want to try out a quick solution, then this would be a great option. But back to the Repair It tool, so it is available for both Windows and Mac, and you can download it from its official website. Site. I'll have a link to it down below. So first I'm going to try repairing these corrupted videos that won't even open. Now if the repair failed or if you're not super satisfied, you can always try advanced repair which will ask for a sample video that is not corrupted. And after the repair is done, you can preview the video to check its quality. And then you can save your fixed videos to your device. So the process for photo repair is very, very similar. You also have the advanced repair option. And of course you can preview and save. So if you ever encounter videos or photos that are corrupted, then you can try to repair them using Repair It online for free or download the Repair It desktop version for the full features. I'll have a link in my description where you can check out and try Repair It. And now back to the video. So I know right now it is the back to school season. And if you're a student, then you may be looking for a digital note-taking device. Of course, a super popular note-taking device is the iPad Pro. I know lots of students have this. Um, I obviously have this myself and I've been using it for the past two years of university. And overall, I would say I am very happy with it. I use it a lot and it's definitely been serving me well although it definitely still has some flaws. But after using the Galaxy Book Pro for a bit, I actually realized that even though, of course, this device isn't completely perfect, uh, it definitely has its own set of flaws, but it doesn't have some of the biggest flaws that the iPad Pro has. So in this video, I want to compare these two devices. I'll talk about their styluses, the software, the operating system, and also their physical features. And hopefully this video will be able to help you decide which note-taking device to get. And yeah, let's just get started. Okay, so the very first thing that I want to talk about are the styluses. So the Galaxy Book Pro works with the S Pen, which actually comes with it when you get it, so you don't have to purchase this separately. On the other hand, the iPad Pro works with the Apple Pencil, which you do have to buy separately. In terms of their shape, these two are actually very similar. They are both rounded with a flat edge, which I think makes it super comfortable to hold. Both of these are not very heavy either, although the S Pen is lighter than the Apple Pencil. However, it's not light to the point where it feels cheap. I would say its weight is pretty similar to like a nice mechanical pencil. I prefer having a lighter stylus. I think it's just much easier to write with one. So in this category, I prefer the S Pen over the Apple Pencil. Now the S Pen actually has a button right here, which actively 
activates the eraser tool in most note-taking apps when you press it down. The Apple Pencil doesn't have any buttons on it. It is perfectly smooth, but it does have a double tap feature. So when you double tap on the side, it will switch to the eraser tool, which I think is fine. But if you want to switch back to your pen or pencil tool again, then you will have to double tap again. So I think this is a lot slower than the button and it can also get pretty tedious if you have to erase a lot. And another problem that I have with the double tap is that it's pretty easy to miss. I've been using the Apple Pencil with the iPad Pro for the past two years, but I still miss it quite often. In fact, now when I'm taking my notes, I don't even use the double tap feature that much anymore just because it's not reliable. Um, I just straight up tap on the eraser tool to get my eraser. So yeah, I think the button on the S Pen is a lot quicker and more reliable than the double tap feature on the Apple Pencil. Okay, and next I want to talk about the two tips. So the S Pen has a rubbery tip. I'm not sure what material it's made of exactly, but it definitely feels rubbery against the glass screen and the Apple Pencil has a plasticky tip and you can definitely hear the difference between these two. The S Pen sounds a lot softer against the glass screen. I think it feels much better to write on a glass screen with a more rubbery tip because there's more resistance and also it more so resembles a real pencil against paper. The Apple Pencil feels kind of slippery almost. And when I first got my iPad, I did kind of struggle with this, but after a while I did get used to it. So I don't really think this is a huge issue, but even if you can't really get used to the slippery feeling, you can always swap out the tip. There are many, many third party options. Another way to do it is to maybe get a screen protector. I know the paper-like screen protector is a very popular option, but as is, I definitely prefer the S Pen with the more rubbery tip. And now I want to talk about the note-taking software options. So the Galaxy Book Pro runs Windows 10, and in Windows, in terms of note-taking apps, OneNote is by far the best option and also the most popular one. Uh, the iPad Pro runs iPadOS, and there are quite a few more options that are all very popular. Just the name some off the top of my head are OneNote, Notability, and GoodNotes. I primarily use OneNote, so I'll talk about that first. I also use Notability, which I will touch on later. Uh, I won't really talk about the other ones because they share similar drawbacks to Notability, and also I don't have too much experience with them. But anyways, so I think OneNote in general is just a fantastic app. I've been using it on my iPad Pro, but I've also started using it on the Galaxy Book Pro. And I did notice that the app behaves very differently on these two devices, which I will definitely touch on. But in general, OneNote syncs perfectly and very, very quickly. So I think OneNote would be very nice to use for collaboration. When you share a notebook with other people, you can actually see all of the updates in real time everyone can look at the notes on their own screen instead of trying to huddle over one single screen. OneNote is also pretty unique in that you get infinite horizontal space. I haven't seen any other note-taking apps with this feature. So in other note-taking apps, you do have to worry about the amount of horizontal space you have. And let's say you want to add something to an existing line, but you don't have enough space. So in that case, you can maybe try shrinking the text in order to fit in more information. But in OneNote, you can just scroll a little bit it horizontally and add in the additional information. And another great feature of OneNote, which I think is very important, is that it is very, very accessible. It works on all kinds of devices, Apple devices, Android, Windows, Linux, and there's even a browser version. And now I want to talk about OneNote specifically on the Galaxy Book Pro. It is absolutely fantastic on this device. It is super optimized. The pen actually tracks perfectly. As you can see here, when I'm drawing a line, the line is directly underneath the pen tip. I definitely appreciate this a lot. And in OneNote, you also get both a pen and a pencil tool. I personally like the pen tool more, but it's always good to have options. OneNote also responds to pressure and tilt and it has very good palm rejection. Overall, OneNote is super nice to use on the Galaxy Book Pro. I was already a fan of OneNote before, but after using it on this device, I think I've become an even bigger fan. But unfortunately, OneNote isn't as good on the iPad. I think the app is just not very optimized. As you can see here, the pen doesn't track perfectly. You can see the line behind the tip of the Apple Pencil. And honestly, I think this is the biggest downside because it makes the 
the 120 hertz refresh rate screen on the iPad feel even slower than the 60 hertz refresh rate screen on the Samsung when I'm using OneNote. You also don't get a pencil tool on OneNote on the iPad. It does respond to pressure, but not tilt and there is still good palm rejection. Um, so overall, the iPad OS version of OneNote is still decent, which is why I used it for, you know, two years, but it just isn't the same as the Windows 10 version. Now, another good note-taking app on the iPad is Notability. It is actually only available as an app on Apple devices, so if you have a PC or an Android phone, unfortunately, you won't be able to access Notability. Notability does support syncing, However, I found it to be not reliable at all. I actually deleted the Notability app on my MacBook because after way too many times of my Notability notes not showing up on my MacBook, I just gave up hoping that it would. Notability also doesn't have any features to support collaboration. I think the best that you can do is maybe to share your notes as a PDF. Um, so yeah, in terms of collaboration and syncing, I think OneNote is much better. However, I do think that the writing experience is better in Notability than OneNote. I think the pen feels more responsive, however, you can see the line still visibly lags behind the pen tip. Notability does respond to pressure and also has good palm rejection. So yeah, in terms of the note-taking experience, I definitely think OneNote on the Book Pro gives you the best experience. Writing on it feels absolutely fantastic. I also really appreciate the fast syncing. All right, and that's enough about the note-taking apps. Now I want to talk a bit more about the operating system because that actually is pretty important to the overall note-taking experience. The Galaxy Book Pro runs Windows 10 and of course Windows lets you do whatever you want to do. So if you're really into multitasking, you like to have a bunch of things open on your screen at the same time, you can do that in Windows. On the other hand, with iPadOS, you are much more limited. You can have at most three apps opened at the same time. However, the third app kind of blocks one of the apps. So really you can only have two apps open at the same time and that's the limit. And another issue with the iPad operating system is the file structure. So I don't really understand how it works. Like it just kind of confusing to use. And that's why over the last two years of university, I have never ever handed in an assignment on my iPad just because I'm scared that something will go wrong at the last minute and I cannot afford to have that happen. So yeah, with iPad OS, there's just the issue of you don't know what you can or cannot do. That is kind of like my biggest problem with the iPad. And that's why I don't really use it for any like serious work. I only use it for a very limited number of tasks that I know it can do well. And now with the Galaxy Book Pro, Windows is, you know, a full-fledged operating system. You can do anything on it. Of course, uploading files is no issue at all. So with this, it is much more flexible to use. I think as a student, you will definitely be able to survive on this Windows device with no problems at all. Any applications that you need to download, you can download it on this. Any files that you need to upload within two seconds, you will be able to do on this machine. But with the iPad, it's much harder to survive on this alone. There are simply too many limitations. Okay, and lastly, I want to talk about the physical aspects of these two devices. And the first thing that I need to point out is the aspect ratio. So the Galaxy Book Pro actually has a 16 by nine aspect ratio, which is a pretty odd aspect ratio. While I think that's fine for, say, media consumption, but for note-taking, I found it to really not be ideal at all. And the issue is, when I'm using this device horizontally like this, I don't have enough vertical space, so I end up having to scroll very often. And if I use this device vertically like this, then I don't have enough horizontal space. I write like two words and I'm out of space. So I end up having to scroll horizontally very often. On the other hand, the iPad Pro is a 10 by seven aspect ratio, which I think is much more friendly to note taking. The Galaxy Book Pro being longer and narrower really isn't doing any favors for note taking. So even though the Galaxy Book Pro is the bigger device, the amount of space that I have for note-taking actually feels pretty similar to the iPad Pro. 
And the next thing that I need to point out is the resolution. So the Galaxy Book Pro has a 1080 screen, whereas the iPad Pro has a 2K plus screen. And because of this, even though the Galaxy Book Pro has an OLED screen and the iPad Pro just has a regular LCD screen, I still think the iPad Pro screen looks better because you can't see any pixels. On the Galaxy Book Pro, I can pretty clearly see the pixels, especially when I'm leaning in and writing on it. And another issue is that the Book Pro screen is much more reflective than the iPad screen, so that's definitely not ideal for bright environments. So yeah, I definitely think the iPad Pro screen is much better. And now I want to compare the bezel size. So the Galaxy Book Pro has super duper thin bezels, and I know typically, you know, we like thin bezels, but in this case, they are a bit too thin to the point where it's hard to hold the Galaxy Book Pro without accidentally misclicking it, which I just did. I think the iPad Pro's bezels are the right size. They are still very, very thin, but there's enough room for me to hold this device comfortably without accidentally clicking something on the screen. And lastly, I think it's worth mentioning that both of these devices are super lightweight. The Galaxy Book Pro is heavier than the iPad Pro, but again, this device also has a keyboard and everything. So I think when the iPad has a case on it or maybe even the Magic Keyboard, the weight will actually be pretty similar between these two. And that's going to be it for the comparisons. Now, my overall thoughts are that the Galaxy Book Pro is far from the perfect device. Its aspect ratio is really not ideal and I also wish that it had a higher resolution screen. However, I think that the note-taking experience on this device is the best with OneNote being very very, very optimized and the S Pen having a button and also being the lighter one. Of course, I do still like my iPad Pro. It is just so light and the screen looks amazing. However, in the near future, I think I would be taking the Galaxy Book Pro with me to my classes. And that's going to be it for this video. I really hope that you found it helpful. If you did, please remember to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel down below. And I really hope to see you in another one of my videos. Bye.